Good morning, Saints. This is Elder Harvey here at the Church of Henrico. We're located here on Brook Road. And uh, we're not meeting as of now because of the, um, the spread of the virus. It has uh, become more prevalent and we're not meeting. I'm the only one here this morning. We pray that uh, uh, you will uh, pray for me and pray with me and pray along with me as I present this message to it to an empty room. Uh, it is empty here and it's kind of awkward because we're used to seeing uh, so many of your faces, but this morning uh, we are here by ourselves. We miss every one of you dearly and we pray that God is continue, will continue to bless you and see you through this particular uh, time of the year because of the, uh, because of the virus. We pray that those in, in your family that may be going through something right now with the virus or whatever, we pray that you are, pray that God will strengthen you and encourage your heart through the word and through others who, who are praying for you and we are praying for you uh, that, uh, during this time of the year. Uh, we want to miss, wish everybody a, a belated, uh, uh, kind of belated holiday Greetings, and we had the uh, Lord's Supper last Sunday, and, uh, and that was our last Sunday meeting, but we're so happy and so, uh, so thrilled that we have a chance again to speak on uh, the Redeemer. We did a, a, a message last Sunday on the Redeemer, and the Redeemer, <clears throat> as we know, is the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And before we go any further, let us have a, a, a brief word of prayer. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you this morning because of your goodness and your kindness. And you said, uh, come unto me all that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm one in need of your rest and your inspiration, Father. So be with us this morning as we preach, as we teach, as we uh, gather information from the Spirit to help us to present Christ in a way that where the body can really appreciate him and the world can see the tremendous work that a Redeemer has done for us. We thank you again for your mercy. Forgive us of our sins and trespasses and cleanse our hearts and our minds right now in the name of Jesus. May the message go out and fulfill your eternal purpose. It is in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Again, we're looking at the, uh, at the book of Ruth. It is uh, one of the many uh, books that share the concept of a redeemer. <clears throat> if you remember, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I think the scripture says that I will put an image between thy seed and her seed, and you shall bruise his heel, but you he will crush your head, but you shall he, you shall bruise his heel. He's talking about a a person, a redeemer, a savior, a rescuer, who will come and rescue the human race from the tremendous fall that occurred when Adam sinned, when he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, this, this story has been told many, many of times, but I, I don't know how serious the world looks at it. I guess the world has heard it so much that it's just a passing thing about uh, this man eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and plunging the whole world into sin. I think the book of Romans said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. By one man sin entered into the world and, and so death by sin, therefore all men have sinned. So actually with those words the, the office is telling us in, in certain ways that we need someone to bring us out of 
the situation that Adam plunged us into. And it all looks kind of like the Redeemer. We need a Redeemer. <clears throat> because when man was lost, he wasn't worth much to anyone, but God did love him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He is going to send a redeemer. A redeemer, as we forestated, is one who redeems something of something of no value but to him, he sees a value in it. Uh, let's put it this way. When you are walking uh, down the street sometimes, and, and I'm noticing in the parking lots, sometimes uh, corns are laying around on the ground and 15, 10 cent dimes, nickels, pennies, and I will stop and pick them up because I know they're of some value. But there are so many people who who see a penny or dime or money, or if, if, especially if it was that, that, that type of value, they won't even bother to pick it up. But a redeemer realizes that no matter how small it is, if you pick up enough of them, uh, you can have a, 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 a quantity that was is, uh, that's worth redeeming. It's worth your trial and tribulation you went through to redeem it. Because if you pick up one penny and you pick up another penny, you have two. Over a period of time, if you continue to pick up pennies in time and nickels and dimes, you will have a dollar. And so that's the way I look at it. Now the Redeemer, in this respect, uh, is Christ himself. But uh, he's the one that redeemed you and I, who the world has forsaken because of the, of our sin nature. Now, the kinsman redeemer is a person, and that's who I think that uh, God is referring to in the book of Genesis, chapter uh, 3, verse 15, that he will send a redeemer because he did say, he will crush your head. So we're actually talking about a person coming somewhere in God's eternal plan and purpose. A person will come to redeem Adam and Eve out of uh, Adam and Eve's children, uh, mankind, out of that situation uh, where they have fallen into death. Now, the ways of sin is death. Uh, we all believe that. Because man, man dies. Man uh, is born. A man born a woman is here but a few days and then he, he passes on. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you have and how much gold or silver, how good you look or how educated you are or where you hold a position of a political office. Uh, you came here, you, you're going to die. And so you need, and before you leave here, you you need a redeemer. Uh, and this is what uh, the book of uh, Ruth uh, and other books in the scriptures teach us about a redeemer. And we say, look, uh, kinsman redeemer is what we're going to look at this morning. A kinsman redeemer has to be someone who is like you. Uh, a, a goat cannot redeem you. A dog cannot redeem you. Your good looks cannot redeem you. Your money can't redeem you. Your education can't redeem you. Your political office can't redeem you. Your color or creed or nationality, it can't redeem you. All of us are in the human family. It matters not what color we are, how tall we are, how short we are, how whatever we are. We're all born of the, of the family of Adam, the Adamic race. 
and the Adamic race needs a kinsman redeemer. If you go back to the, we're going to get under the roof in a little bit, but if you go back right to the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, you can see this more clearly. Thank God for the scriptures. <clears throat> and this is what uh, God said to the serpent who had so cleverly uh, coerced Eve into eating and then she gave to her husband and he did eat too. Now you can't put this, this thing on Eve. You no, know, Adam is the one that carries life. He's the one that carries the re regeneration of life, not the woman. Man has life, woman, all she does is, not all she does, but she conceives and brings forth. Look here. Verse 14 of chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, that is the old devil, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all every beast of the field and upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life then God made this promise I will put enmity between the woman between thy seed and her seed and he speaking of the coming redeemer who's able to redeem I should, he shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel you will cause a little suffering to the redeemer but surely he will crush your head he's going to kill you that is what we see here in the book of Genesis now because he was a He's coming as a person. He has to be like us in some respect. And the definition of a kinsman redeemer is a kinsman redeemer was someone to redeem what was lost. And I think we made an attempt to uh, clarify that on a penny. You pick up enough pennies and clean them up, they are of great value. This could be any person, the Redeemer, property, their freedom, or even their name. The kinsman might also call upon to extract revenge someone who has killed a relative. You may send someone to revenge someone's death, to go after someone. The law is a kind of Redeemer. If one has wronged someone, the law redeems that person and places them in custody or in some kind of or jail. The definition of a kinsman redeemer is it has to be like you or like me. Kinsman redeemer. The book of the incarnation of Jesus, we're going to get to Ruth in a minute, but I want to make sure that we understand what a kinsman redeemer is. A kinsman redeemer is be like why, like we are. Christ was a person. He came, he's incarnated. If you go to the book of, of uh, Matthew in chapter 1, chapter 1, verse, I think at 5 through 16, you will see Christ preparing the, Christ, the, the kinsman redeemer. Chapter 1. We need to look at this, 5 through 16. We're going to take our time on this because we can come back and take a look at this a little, a little later. But we want to make sure that we understand what a kinsman redeemer is. Chapter 5, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 5. It says, And Solomon and we're, we're going to get into this and Solomon begat Boaz of Rahab 
and Boaz begot Obed of the root of Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David, the king, and David king begot Solomon, and her who had been the wife of Uriah. This he's talking about uh, in the Old Testament. Now, it was a the red demon was coming to the line of David. Look at this. If you go back to the book of Ruth, we're going to look and see. And it came to pass, I just laid a little foundation, but we're going to look at it even deeper and more uh, uh, clearer as we go through this book. And we're going to spend some time here because we need to see the kinsman redeemer. Now Christ, now chapter 1 of the book of Ruth. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled there was a famine. And we remember in the book of Judges uh, so many years ago I preached in Mexico every man did that what was right in his own eyes. That was my title but actually it's the book of, Ju book of Judges saying that nobody cared about anybody uh, just about what we see nowadays nobody cares about anybody you could be lying on the street and they'll step over you walk around you and care nothing for you they won't even speak and this is what I think is is occurring uh, that occurred here in the book of, of Judges where it says that every man did what that was right in his own eye and a famine came in the land, and the famine came as a way of judging Israel or judging Jerusalem because of their wayward walk away from the things of Christ. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab and his wife and his two sons. This man, did, 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 it got so bad there in Jerusalem, uh, Bethlehem, uh, Judah, that uh, this man decided to leave and go unto the, the, the nation of Moab. And actually, the Bethlehem means a, a bread basket. Uh, that's the actually the, the symbolic of the word bread basket. And but they went to the Moab, and that was called the trash can. So they went from a blessing actually to the trash can. If you look at those particular uh, items, you see that they, they are saying that they left the house of bread and went to the trash can when you look up the word Moab and what it really meant. And he said he took his wife and his two sons along with him down to Moab. Because they went down there because there was a famine in Judah, or Bethlehem, and there was nothing to eat, so they decided to go lead a bread basket and go down to the trash can to find that he'll get something to eat. And they sojourn in Moab. If you look at verse 2, and the name of, of the man was Emelech. That was the man who decided to go down uh, to Moab and the name of his wife was Naomi. So Emelech and Naomi decided to go down to Moab and it took their two sons with them, Madeline and Chilon. And they came unto the country of Moab and continued there. They stayed there, uh, I think the scripture going to teach us. And Emelach and Norman's husband died and she was left with her two sons. So. This is a bleak picture, and I hope you can see what 
the scriptures is trying to teach us here that you can't leave if, if you're with God don't leave him to go somewhere where there's nothing but at the same time the sovereignty of God saw her, her um, Amalek and his wife make the trouble mistake of leaving the, the bread basket and going to the trash can and so many times uh, we leave something because it's not pleasant to go to somewhere else and that somewhere else is actually worse than where we live. But listen to me. And Emelech and Neil and her husband died and she was left with two sons. Here's a picture of a, of a, of a man who left Jerusalem, left Bethlehem and Judah with his wife and two sons and they went to Moab. And if you do a little bit of search, you can find that Moab was the result of Lot and having incest with his two daughters. I think the eldest, eldest son uh, was named Moab and the younger one was named Ammon. So you have two nations who came out of that incest relationship between Lot and his and his two daughter one was Amor the, the Moabites and the other was the Amorites so we don't know exactly what went on in that family in that nation but I'm thinking because of the origin of those nations of the out of incest with their, with Lot and his two daughters uh, things weren't very kosher in those particular places and it says that he went down there with his two sons and his wife now while he was down there the Bible says that Noam's husband first verse 3 says oh, Noam's husband died and she, she was left with her two sons so this is this is a woman who had left Judah Bethlehem and went down to Moab hoping that thing would be better down there and she got down there and her husband died and here she is with these with these two boys trying to uh, make ends meet down there you could just imagine how poor and how they struggle there in that land of Moab uh, with her husband dead and the uh, two sons who were very sick to themselves. Uh, in fact, one was named Sickly and another one named, was named uh, Peaked. Uh, my grandmother used to use the word, well, you look so Peaked. Well, she wasn't talking to me or actually, but she was talking about people who weren't very nourished and they were going through something, they were hungry. And there was a lot of people like that in years ago, back in the 40s and early 50s, where you saw they didn't look very healthy. And these two boys, I think, uh, from what I have gathered, they were not very healthy. And uh, but they said they took wives of the women of Moab. So here are these two boys, who are very sick of themselves and not very healthy, took wives of the Moabs. And so there was an intermarriage between. Moabs and the and uh, the, Israel, the Israelites, so that was actually they had actually done something that the scriptures after forbade. They forbade the Israelites or uh, the people of, of God to marry in a, in a marry with any other than than their own. But this happened, and they took wives of the women of Moab. Uh, uh, one was named Orpah. And the name of the other one was Ruth, and they dwelt there ten years. So they dwelt there ten years. Naomi, Ruth, uh, those two boys, and they dwelt there ten years along with Oprah. Now, and Naomi, so there were what five people there for ten years living in this land 
where there was a con constant struggle to actually survive. And these two boys uh, that were actually Norman's uh, two sons married two more Baptists. And I, 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 I can't imagine what kind of a relationship that they had. I, I can't even imagine where their, their minds were when they married these two women and, 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 the, law, and the, the book of uh, Leviticus forbade them and you look, might read the book of Deuteronomy for marrying uh, people of another uh, nation, another uh, yeah, another nation, another gene. So it was kind of weird that they did this, but they were in a land where they was reaching out, they were hungry, they were, they were, they were struggling. So if they came and married, it would cause uh, whatever reason, I have no idea. But they did marry. And, me, and verse 5 says, and Melon, uh, and Melon and Shalom died also, both of them and the women was bereaving her two sons and her husband. So eventually the, the husband died earlier. Ten years later, the two sons died. So they had been in the land of Naomi for about 10 years they had got these two uh, girls and their husband had died and so the only three persons were left was Naomi and of course uh, Ruth and uh, her sister it, it is a, pit, a pitiful picture here but the scriptures have it for us <laughs> that this picture was one where God was providing Naomi, Ruth, and Oprah with a savior. I'm thinking that she was included, even though she didn't take advantage of it, she was included. When you go to your kinsman redeemer, he doesn't check and see your your credentials or where you came from or who you were or what nation you came from or what county you came from or what race you came from or what genealogy you came from or what education you have or what how much money you got he, he loves you in spite of that so the kinsman redeemer and I'm saying all that now so that when we get to speak about this kinsman redeemer you can see that Christ fits all of those particular or areas where one comes in and he doesn't matter doesn't matter where you came from he loves you and cares for you anyway now we're going to pick up here next week I know there's a little drawn out there but I wanted to just lay the foundation so that when we begin to uh, venture into this book of uh, uh, Ruth even more, more, more so at least we have something of a foundation to work with so my prayer is that you will do your own particular study in the book of Ruth and look at it. And when we come back next week, we'll bring you more on that Kinsman Redeemer. The Kinsman Redeemer had to be someone who was able to redeem, but someone like you and me also. The Kinsman Redeemer had to be one who had wealth and power to redeem is something that was useless and worthless and to make it his own after a certain price was paid. And we'll see that next week as we further along in this great, in this great study in the book of Ruth. Pray for me that I'll, I'll be able to venture into this book next uh, in the previous weeks, in the coming weeks, to help uh, explain about the Kinsman Redeemer. And I will advise you to take and do your own study on the Kingsman Redeemer. Kingsman Redeemer. He had to be someone like me. He had to be someone that was human. 
And I'll give you uh, just a brief uh, note of that, a brief hint. In the book of John, it said, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as to many as he did, re did receive him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. But he was spoken of metaphorically in the book of Ruth. And even in other books, as we studied this, this particular uh, metaphor here of the kinsman redeemer. So I pray that you will continue to uh, listen, to continue to pray for me, because uh, it's so important that we look at the kinsman redeemer, how wonderful he is and how marvelous he is to reach down into the muck and mire clay and pull you and I out and clean us up, wash us clean, and present us to the Father. I thank you this morning. Pray for us. Stay here. We love you. And we'll see you next, next Sunday morning. Father, in Jesus' name, and for his sake, we praise and give you glory and majesty right now in the name of Jesus. May this message touch your hearts and open up minds and eyes of those who believe not that there is someone of flesh and blood who cares about us, who is our kinsman, kinsman redeemer. So we thank you and praise you. Bless this message now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.